Good evening everyone and welcome back once again to the FM Scout YouTube channel with me Teach FM and as we can see this is once again another episode of our Into the Future series in which we take a Football Manager 17 current wonder kid when left to the AI alone. In this episode as you can see we've got a little bit of a different one today maybe not necessarily a household name to everybody but we do have young Maximiliano Romero who plies his trade at Velez. Before we get into it though if you would like to see any more Football Manager content if you consider coming and checking out my channel where I'm currently taking charge of Manchester United we're in season 3 now and we are chasing the elusive Champions League so if you could maybe bob over take a view of a couple of the videos maybe even drop a sub that would be grand, the link's in the description. So, one of the youngest players I featured in the Into the Future series, Maximiliano Romero. Now, he's currently playing at Velez, he is only 17 years old, valued at 1.5 million and currently only earning a measly 2,000 pounds a week. The great thing about this kid is genuinely he should be pretty much affordable to most, not all most, you'll still be paying a few million, but you certainly won't be reaching the dizzy heights that some of the other wonder kids come at. He is only media description of a striker, however, I've seen this lad progress a few times now and he always does quite well, and I've personally bought him myself, and although his stats at the moment don't look too fantastic, trust me, this lad genuinely does get good. Now before we get into the experiment, one thing I would like to say, and I always say this in every episode, we are leaving these kids to the AI to see how they progress on their own. But I firmly believe that you guys, especially the ones who have got experience, bringing wonder kids into the game, into their squad and making them better, will always, always get a better result than the AI will when they do it themselves. So on that note then, we will take a brief look at his history. However, of course, he is only 17 years old, so we're not expecting to see too much. And as we can see... 2016 is when he made his sort of senior debut for Velez. He managed to 11 appearances and three goals, which at his age is a pretty good return, I think. We'll just check his landmark achievements. And as we can see, 2016, first senior goal, senior debut. It's what we expected at the moment. My assumption would be in his biography, yep, non-existent at the moment. So that's it then. He is only 17 years old, so he's had no caps for Argentina. He's had no youth caps, so at the moment he's very, very raw. As we can see, his stats are generally okay. You know, we see lots of 12s, lots of 13s, and a few 14s, especially in his physical attributes. But they will improve as the lad goes along. So what we're going to do now, in the namesake of the series, we're going to head forward five years. Now, ordinarily, what this will do is it will take us to our players and we'll team at 24. Obviously, on this occasion, we're going to be coming back to Romero at the age of 22 to see whether he's still in Argentina or whether he's moved on. And, of course, see where he's improved. So here we are then in the year 2021 and Maximiliano Romero is now playing his trade for Schalke or 4 in Germany. Obviously, the first thing we see, because I use the traffic light system is that he's managed to break into some of the higher areas and his stat attributes reaching 16s in a number of places but we'll start with the basic stuff get this as you remember he was only valued at a few million quid he's now valued at a massive 41 million pounds earning 83k a week and this shows that maybe at the beginning of the game, it would be a great investment. As long as you can put the time into him, you can certainly earn money off him. If you're not maybe a massive club, he will be able to keep hold of him. He's now picked up two caps for Argentina, however, not scoring any goals. And he did manage 21 under 20 caps, getting 12 goals along the way. Media description, still a striker, but he has game player traits with plays one twos and knocks ball past opponent. He's fitting into the complete forward role with a full bright ring on the role and due to based on a support role. But yeah, I think doing all right looking at those stats but of course where it matters is just seeing where the growth has been on these stats as we go so we'll start with the technicals and wow we've certainly seen some decent growth here so his corners have gone up by three which is amazing his crossing's gone up by two which is also very very good he's dribbling up by two as well finishing up by three which is absolutely fantastic for the striker first touch up by three as well obviously i mean we saw this lad first at 17 very raw he's now obviously becoming more refined his free kick taken remained at eight heading has gone up by two long shots has gone up by five five i think that's the biggest growth stat we've seen here on into the future but nonetheless we'll carry on his long throws on the up by one, his marking's also on the up by one, but two in his passing, 
four in his penalty taking and three in his technique. I think it's fair to say that from a very raw Romero, seeing him at 22, we're seeing decent marks improvements and again would show that it'd be a wise buy at the beginning of the game when he's at his cheapest. And as we move on to his mentals now, normally someone's mental game does sort of increase when they're at, from that very young age, but we would expect to see this grow even more maybe when we come back in five years at 27, but we'll take a look anyway. Aggression's remain the same, but his anticipation's gone up by three, which once again for a striker, absolutely absolutely brilliant. Bravery stayed at 11, composure has gone up by 2, concentration by 1, decisions by 2, determination by 3 which is good to see, he's obviously been getting some good tutoring, some good coaching. Flair has gone up by 1, leadership has gone up by 2 which is an age thing, we expect to see that. Off the ball also gone up by 2, positioning up by 2. Teamwork's remain the same, but a great thing here is both his vision and his work rate have gone up by three, so mentally the lad's getting stronger, and again, in my opinion, showing that he's certainly worth a consideration when you're out in the market. Now, physicals, and what can I say? Due to the traffic lights, we can see there's big differences here already, but we'll start from the top. Two in acceleration, four in agility, four in balance, two in jumping reach, two in natural fitness, only one in pace, which is a... A little bit of a shame, but it looks like he's playing in that complete forward role. He's not going to be trying to charge the back line at every opportunity, but both stamina and strength growing by two. The lad's grew in height as well, as we can see here. He's gained a few centimetres at 17 years old. He wasn't finished growing. And has also bulked up by an extra five kilos, which won't be doing him any problems whatsoever. So again, that's all the stats. And I think it's a fair assumption here that this lad has come on leaps and bounds but what will be interesting is when we get to his history to actually see how much he moved away from Velez for because that's the part that's important to you guys if you're looking for a sort of a kid and see how he does in the future it's where it's always going to come down to money if you're not your your Real Madrid your, your Barcelona's your Bayern Munich your Manchester United you know these players with uh, these clubs with all the money you might be a lower club and you're trying to look for that bargain and there's a possibility here that Romero might be that bargain for you. So there we go then. As the game started, he did continue at Velez for two seasons. 27 appearances and 8 goals in his first one with a 6.84 rating, which isn't great, but you have to bear in mind he was 17 years old. He then played half of the second year, got 14 appearances, 7 goals, so scored 1 goal every other game, got a 7.04, which is more what we like to see. But not only do we like to see that, but obviously Atletico do too, because that's when they came in for 8.5 million. It obviously then looks like they loaned him back to Velez for the balance of that season, where he had another seven appearances, six goals, bettering the first half of the season, 7.23 average rating, all great stuff. He was then loaned out to Fiorentina, where he played a lot of games, 37 appearances in the league with 21 goals and a 7.16 average rating. And then in the following year, it looks like he only managed a game for Atletico before they decided to move him on. Either that or with Schalke knocking on the door, which basically triple money, Atletico thought, it's great business here, we can move him on. He went straight up to Germany, had 17 starts for Schalke, grabbing 14 goals with a 7.49 rating. And then in his following season, which is the last one that we will be looking at, he managed 31 starts, 19 goals and a 7.17 average rating. So I think it's fair to say at the moment that the lad has done really, really well. Obviously a surprise package, both in Italy and Germany. Looks like he didn't really get much of a chance in La Liga. Obviously Atletico only giving him one appearance, but... If someone's going to come knocking off and you triple money and maybe you've got other options, it's sometimes a sensible thing to do to move him on. So as we move on to his landmark achievements, and in 2017, he did win the Sudamericano with the under-20s of Argentina. He then made his debut for the full team of Argentina against Paraguay in 2018 before winning the DFB Pokal for Schalke in 2020. So as we take a quick look at Romero's biography, then we can also see that he's earned recognition from the football community for his achievements. He was named the under-20s World Cup Golden Shoe third place. He won the Serie A top goal scorer, that's, so that was when he went to Fiorentina, and Serie A striker of the year runner-up and German Bundesliga top goal scorer runner-up. So in just, I mean, he's, the lad's only just 22 and he's picked up a top goal scorer and came second in two big awards across Italy and Germany. Fair to say, the lad's doing all right. So there we go then, that was Romero at 22 years old. And once again, in the namesake of the series, we are going to head five years into the future and we'll be coming back to a Maximiliano Romero at 27 years old. And he really should be on fire by that point, you would hope. So we're back with Romero now in 2026. He's 27 years old. 
Ultimately, as soon as we look at it and we can see that, it looks like there's been some improvements. I'll be honest, I was hoping for more. The lad had, lad had started progressing so well, I thought we might have seen a lot more greens here. But nonetheless, let's not judge it just yet. He's currently valued at 46.5 million, so his value has gone up. Not to anything amazingly high from what it was currently, but let's be honest, at 22, he was already worth a good few quid. Now earning a massive £250,000 a week at West Ham. With 50 caps to his name and 23 goals, that is an astounding international record. And with a media description of world-class striker. He's also added a new player trait that tries first-time shots. And yeah, I think all in all, looks promising. But of course, what we are here to see is just what those technicals, mentals and physicals line up like. So we'll start with the technicals. And as we can see... Slight improvements, improvements nonetheless, but looking only slight. His corners have remained the same. Crossing's gone up by one along with his dribbling, as has his finishing, now up to an impressive 17. His first touch also gone up by one. His passing's gone up by one. Penalty taking's also gone up by one, but his tackling's gone down by one. So, not massive improvements like it was from a very raw player at 17 to 22, but we have seen improvements nonetheless. And as we move on to his mentals now, this is where we would expect to see improvements and I think it's fair to say that by just a quick glance it looks like there's been a fair few. Aggression's remained the same and anticipation's gone up by 1. His composure's gone up by 1 to 15. His concentration also at 15, up from 13. Decisions have gone up by 2. Determinations remain the same along with flair but his leadership as he gets older of course has gone up by 2. Off the ball up to 17 which is great for a striker. And then the only other increase comes in the way of his vision, where he's gone from 12 to 14. So I think mentally, the lads progress really well, but let's see where those physical attributes lie. And although it doesn't look like there's that many improvements on the face of it, at least we're seeing nothing going down. The lads kept up with his training, so we'll take a look. His acceleration stayed the same, but his agility has gone up by one. Balance has also gone up by one, but jumping reach has stayed at 14. Natural fitness has remained the same. Pace, stamina and strength have all also remained the same. But at 27 years old, still doing very, very well. And I think, still think this harks back to maybe one of the better buys that we've done on into the future. So there we have it then. That was his attribute changes across the range. Um, I personally think he's done okay. Um, but interestingly, let's see how he ended up at West Ham. And there we have it, guys. Since we last seen him, and he only made one more appearance in the new season for Schalke. And West Ham came knocking with a... Almost ridiculous £84 million bid to take Romero down to the Olympic Stadium. And when he got there, what a first season he had. 33 games, 20 goals in the Premier League, which is something that when we see the South Americans come over in the first year, they don't always hit the ground running, with the exception of maybe a couple. But that's astounding. He had a 7.24 rating. In the following year, he then played 33 games, got 18 goals, which I still think is very impressive in the Premier League, but he only got a 6.92. He then upped his game somewhat again the following season with a 32 appearances, 20 goals and a 7.31 average rating. And then it seemed to sort of slow down somewhat. 32 games, 14 goals and 27 games in 13 goals in his last two seasons respectively. But nonetheless, he's hit 75 Premier League goals in five years. And I think for the Premier League, which is often known to be one of the tougher leagues in the world, I think the lad's done stellar. And I think it's fair to say, looking at the lad's landmark achievements, moving to West Ham might have been a very good move for his trophy cabinet. So since we last seen him, he picked up his first international goal against Uruguay in 2021. In 2022, he went on to win the AFL Cup with West Ham, before winning the Premier League in 2025, along with the Europa League, then a Community Shield, and then in 2026, won the FA Cup with West Ham too. So a decent amount of awards there. And as we take a look at his biography, we can see that along with what he'd already won when we last seen him, he's since picked up English Premier Division top goalscorer runner-up. So even when he had them really good seasons, he wasn't quite making it. He won Young English Players Player of the Year, European Golden Shoe runner-up, and European Champions Cup Golden Boot runner-up. So it looks like he's had a career of coming second, but when you consider if you'd bought this lad at the very beginning of the game for what might only be five six seven million quid if you're just gonna have a play that's always gonna come runner up i think you'd still be happy at that money so there we go then that's the last we will see as maximilian romero in this episode as a player however what we're going to do now is go into the future to the point of retirement at which point we'll see whether romero is going to stay in the game or of course whether he's going to hang up his boots and retire from football 
What will be interesting here is, is he's still got time to move clubs. He may still move around. He may even get better because he's only at 27 years old. However, we're only going to see that after I've simmed forward what is going to be a chronic amount of years. And there we go. In the year 2034, I had to go forward eight years to find Maximiliano retired. And he is now classed as a director of football or a manager. However, of course, at the age of 35, not in the job yet. What's going to be interesting now is though we're going to go check his history and see whether he managed to stay at West Ham or whether he made a move to another club. And as we can see, he did make the move. In the year 26-27, he only managed 13 appearances, grabbing two goals with a 6.89 rating. And then the following year, just two appearances all year. Managed to grab himself a goal, got a 7.25 rating. But the interesting thing here is he'd only scored three goals across two years. And for some reason, Manchester United still deemed it fit to pay £76 million for the lad. In his first season at United, he played 30 games, getting 10 goals, 6.96 average rating. And then the following year, 33 games, 18 goals with a 6.99. Again, another 33 games, 17 goals with a 7.1. One, one. And then in his final two seasons, 17 appearances and three goals, eight appearances and three goals with a 6.69 and a 6.90 respectively. So his move to Manchester United was probably lucrative in his pocket for him. However, I'm maybe not sure that United got the best value out of him for £76 million. One thing that is interesting is his total transfer values metered up to £194 million with 439 league appearances and 218 goals. Which leads me to come back to, my apologies guys, he ended his career with 86 caps for Argentina, 40 goals, pretty dead on. You know, if you're going to get a goal almost every other game, I'm sure your international manager is going to be happy with that. So now we will go to the lads' landmark achievements, and it has to be said, from what was a bustling trophy cabinet at first, has sort of slowed down somewhat. He's only managed to pick up two major landmarks since we last seen him. One of them being the Copa America with Argentina in 2027 and then the EFL Cup with 20, in 2028. So it looks like he made a money move to Manchester United who evidently weren't at the top of their game because unfortunately he didn't add himself a single trophy with them. So there we go then guys, that was the life and career of Maximiliano Romero on Football Manager 17 when left to the AI alone. Now I suppose the question is, based on this experiment, would I buy him or would you buy him? And I've got to honestly say, absolutely. I genuinely think that we can always get better from these wonder kids when we micromanage them ourselves. And if he can do that well for West Ham in those first five years, imagine you'd already put the first few years into his training to make him even better. In my opinion, especially at the money that he is, an absolute must buy. So if you've enjoyed this video, guys, don't forget to hit the like button at the bottom. If you're new around here, sub to the channel. We always have great content every single day here on FM Scout. That does link me perfectly to fmscout.com. If you've not checked out the website, why don't you head over where you'll find all the latest news, views, tactics, graphics, you name it. It's all on the website and it's certainly worth a look. Other than that, guys, I've been Teach FM and I'll catch you later. See you in a bit.